Hi everybody, welcome to CNXG, my name is David. This is part two of my Q&A videos where I'm answering your guys' questions from the last Q&A video. So any questions you guys have today, go down below in the comment section, ask me and I'll answer them in the next Q&A video. We do this every single Monday. Never miss one. So let's start with the part two. Next question is from Christina in Virginia. Hello, Christina. Could you please talk about people in our lives, high in narcissistic traits, but not quite disordered, how do we handle or avoid them? So, uh, two-part question. Yes, you know, um, I've, I've talked about this before. Think of uh, a psychopathy test. So, there is a psychopathy test. Um, I don't remember how many, how, how much, I, th I, I can't remember how many, I, f I think 53 or something uh, things that, that they rate you on. I don't remember what it is, but there's a certain number you need to be, to have, to be a psychopath. Now, most people rate so low, some are like one, two, and three, while others are like 53, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, but that's an interesting question, because if you take a true psychopath, they're, they're messed up, you know what I mean? But if you take someone that's not quite a psychopath, and that's what I think maybe people like Donald Trump or something, maybe, you know, we all want to call him a narcissist. He may not be disordered at all. Very high in narcissism though, isn't he? Right? I think someone that isn't quite a psychopath can be more dangerous or maybe the most dangerous person in the world because they ha it's like they, they almost have both sides of it. You know what I mean? And they can function better because they're not truly disordered. They can be very dangerous. So, yeah, there's people that rate high in narcissism that aren't quite narcissists. There's a criteria you have to be to get that. And you, all of us fit somewhere on that. Most of us are low. Narcissists are high. What about the people that are high but not quite narcissists? Scary. You know? And, and that's why I say it's not important so much to um, label these people or label anybody. You know, it's just their behavior is unacceptable, right? So we don't accept the behavior that they have. Um, how do we handle or avoid them? So you're not, you're never going to avoid them, right? You can't avoid people in the world, you know, unless it's like a, a whole country. Just don't go to the country, right? But you know, this is a social problem everywhere in the world. So they're, they're, are, they're, they're out there, you know, what are you going to do? They're in the workplace. They're higher in the workplace. Psychopaths are much higher as you get higher in a corporate ladder, as you go into bigger companies and, you know, once you go from blue collar to white collar, it, it, it's just higher and higher and higher. So you can't avoid them. So that, that is the right question. How do you handle them? And it's internal. Okay. It's not external. It's internal. It's in here. This is how you handle them. Okay. I've said it so many times, you know, red flags are great. They are, you know, if you need red flags, like, hey, next time you, someone does this to you, that's wrong, you know, good. That's good if you don't know that. But we can't just live our lives saying, you know, are they narcissists? Are they, are they? Keep them out of my life. And, and think that we just are going to recognize them by red flags and that's all we need to do. No. Realize that disordered people don't get to pick and choose who they're with. They, they don't date healthy people takes an uh, unhealthy person to date them so we work on ourselves and become healthy and then they we want nothing to do with them and they really can't do anything to us okay hope that makes sense good luck next question is from luna in australia hello luna do borderlines compartmentalize as narcissists do well that's not a general thing i mean sure sure um my ex preferred to keep her life separate from relationship life. Also, she called me crazy for going down a spiritual path, but her new friend was highly spiritual. You know, a lot of this, you know, first of all, she probably doesn't have any empathy, doesn't care about what people are interested, doesn't care how people feel, and she's highly manipulative and wants to keep things separate, especially her victim. That's why they isolate their victim. They don't want any outside influence. Right? And they don't want you talking to her and you don't want her talking to you. You know, maybe she cheats on you and her friend knows. 
So we keep them separate. I don't think she cares that her friend is spiritual, and I don't think she cares if you are. I think it's another way to, you know, devalue you, to criticize you, without really caring about what she's criticizing about. She just wants to do it to you, just to hurt you, you know? She used to love your black hair, but now she hates your black hair, you know? It, I, I don't think it's about that. I don't think it's about what it looks like. I think it's about somebody who's highly disordered, highly manipulative, massive insecurities, doesn't want people to talk about them, can't handle that, especially if you are lying to everyone, you know? That's my guess. I think that's what it is. Um, there's all kinds of things going on in these people's heads. Who really knows exactly why they did something? I, I, I can come up with reasons why, but I'll never know why somebody does something. Exactly. You know, unless you crawl inside their head and figure it out, or you, they just tell you and they're telling you the truth, which they don't. So <laughs> you'll never know from them, so we all guess. But from what I know, that would be my guess. Hope that helps, okay? Thank you, Luna. Andre from Canada. Hello, Andre. Andre has two questions. Do borderlines ever develop the awareness of how much pain they have caused others? You know, if I say no, borderlines are going to say, yes, we do. You know? And I'm not borderline, so I don't know. But that is a major trait of that disorder. Lack of awareness. Also, if somebody doesn't have empathy then they can't see that. You know what I mean? It literally, they cannot put themselves in your shoes. Literally. They cannot look at you in pain and say, God, that must hurt. No, can't do it. The other thing is they can't confront these things. They can't confront the pain they cause. They cannot, cannot say that what they've done is in their control. That makes them responsible for everything. They can't be. Ever, 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 ever can't be. That's why they have to keep the victim narrative all the time. They protect it. Okay? They enforce it all the time. I'm the victim. You're the bad person. I've been hurt. This happened to me. This person did this to me. That person did this to me. And that's my entire life. Neat. That would suck <laughs> to feel like, to think like that. Second question. Do you ever get feelings of anxiety when around toxic people? Sure. Sure. Feelings like, oh, 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 God, I've been around, man, I've been around some crazy borderlines that are just all over the place, man. And you're just like, oh, God, what are they going to do next? I mean, these, these, these people have hurt a lot of people. These are dangerous people, can be. I've said this before, when you, you know, borderlines, this is a fact I found out recently. This will tell you something, uh, and I'm going to get a lot of shit for this, um, but it's a fact. It's not, it's not, it's not my opinion. Uh, over a thousand children are murdered every year in America by their parents, and a ton of them have been diagnosed with, guess what, borderline personality disorder, okay? ton of them. So tons of borderlines are murdering their children every year just in America alone, okay? These are dangerous people. Not all, not all, okay? Not all. But these are disordered people that have little or none empathy. These, most of these people have been severely abused and they want to hurt people for that, okay? So, do I get anxious around these people? I don't like it. Doesn't feel good, you know? And that's the way it should feel for all of you guys. Toxic people should make you feel like crap. And that's why we get away from them. We listen to that because that's been the problem. We don't do that, right? A lot of us don't do that. Thanks, Andre. I hope that helps. Love Light from Amsterdam. After three weeks of no contact, I ran into my ex at the park. I handled him well and he disappeared in five minutes. Is he done now? Well, good job for handling it well. I hope that feels really good. And you start, you know, keep that going. Keep doing it and, and give yourself some confidence. You know, I, I hope so. Is he done now? I wouldn't know. 
I don't know what, what he is going to do. I, I just, I couldn't tell you. You know, I, I don't know. Um, that's a good way to get rid of him, though. You know, it seems like he might be done. I would ask, I would ask myself, you know, what are the chances in three weeks that you ran into him in public? He might be stalking you. If he's stalking you and obsessed with you, he might not be done. Because obsessed stalkers are never done. So, is he done? I, I don't know. But that's a good way. Sounds like he might be. Sounds like he might be. Let me know. Let us know. Keep us informed. Thank you. Betsy from Mexico. Hello, Betsy. When my ex picks up our daughter, he is frustrated with me. Um, I'm proud of myself because I'm emotionless. And, and you went on about um, how you handle him when he picks her up. And he and now he even said, why are you, why are you treating me the way I used to treat you? <laughs> Crazy, huh? Um, and he wants you now to go with him. He's always like, why don't you go with this? Come on, come on. And you want to know what to do. Well, Betsy, you're handling it fine. You're handling it fine. You don't need me to tell you anything. If this is really bothering you, find a way you don't have to even see him. One recommendation I always give is do the trade, do the drop off and pick up at school. And you can do it anywhere. A doctor's appointment, a dentist's appointment, you know what I mean? You aren't at school all day with your child, right? So he can pick her up after school. Just just uh, an example, okay? But um, stand your ground, okay? Don't entertain, you know, literally be like, stop, you know? But be careful what you say in front of the child. Try not to fight too much, okay? I, I, I know this is horrible. Be glad it's over. Be glad that you're stronger now. Good job. It'll get better and easier, trust me. But just keep going. If you're doing something right, don't change it. Sarah from Iceland. Hello, Sarah. I'm confused. While dating my ex-narcissist, he cried two different times when I visited him and had to leave. So uh, you guys lived in different countries. You went and visited him. You know, you used to visit him and then you'd go back home. But two of those times, he cried. Can narcissists cry and show emotions like that? Why not? Why can't they not cry? Um... These are miserable people, you know. I, most of them had pretty sad ch childhood, you know. Um, no one wants to lose a relationship. My guess is you're you've you're kicking in his massive fear of abandonment, and he might be borderline, you know. He might be borderline, but um, that's what it sounds like. But uh, can narcissists cry? Yes, narcissists can cry. Is it real? Oh. I mean, that time when he's crying, is it real? Do you see tears? He probably did. He's probably just, you know, afraid to see you go, but that doesn't mean he loves you. You know? People have reasons they like people, and yes, part of you misses people, and then a part of you misses what that person was to you. So maybe he doesn't love you, but he will miss what you are to him, what you give to him, how you make him feel, okay? And I mean, anybody with a personality disorder cannot handle relationships. They can't. They, they, they just can't. They, they, they don't work. They don't do them very well. Hope that helps, Sarah. Thank you. Carlito from Indianapolis, Indiana. Hello, Carlito. Why do you say it's not good to tell a narcissist they're a narcissist? Good question. Um... Major reason, Carlito, is, is supposedly narcissists can't change, okay? Highly manipulative people, right? And if you give them, all you're doing is giving them more information on how to be better at what they're doing. And I've seen this, there's, there's like another YouTube channel out there that is totally disordered, and um, her viewers don't know it, and she is... You know, she uses all this information to her advantage. So if you say something to this person, you know, hey, uh, I think you're doing this. Projection! Projection! And you're just sitting there going, okay, projection, all right? Well, I, the reason I said it is because gaslighting. I'm gaslighting you now, okay? 
and they'll they'll have a smear campaign against you. And if you say a word about a smear campaign, then they say you're smear campaigning me. You know, it, it's they they will just use it to be better manipulators. You don't believe me? H.G. Tudor says it, and Sam Vaknin. They say it. This stuff helps me be better at it. So you just you know if if they could change and you're telling them what they are to to fix it, great. But supposedly narcissists can't change, so why tell them? Right? Why tell them? Why give them that kind of information so that they can be better at it? So they can sit there and tell people that are letting them know that their behavior is unacceptable. They don't just go, projection. You're talking about yourself. You're doing it. Stop gaslighting me. You know, that kind of crap is just, it's just, it's just sick, dude. <laughs> try, try and deal with a disordered person that knows all this stuff. You know, not, it, it's just harder, you know. They just don't need to know. They don't need to know. They know something's wrong with them. They want to find out. Let them figure it out. But narcissists will tell you that they don't care. They don't want to change. And good. They can't. I mean, they can't. So what are you going to do? Hope that helps. Monet from the Middle East. If the narcissist answers you with a photo, what's that mean? Well, I don't know exactly what you're saying by this question. So I'm, I'm guessing... You said answer, so you, did you send them a message and then answer with a photo? Like, you know, there's not a lot of information here, so I can't tell you. But just from this, you know, insecure seeking validation. How's that? I'm so insecure, I want everyone to look at my photo and say I'm really good looking. That's why disordered people constantly change their Facebook profile every day. It's just crazy. You ever seen people like that? Every day, new profile. Photo. Next day, another photo. Next day, different photo. Next day, different. And it's always just them. It's always just them going like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, like that. It's like, oh my God, dude. And they got to have all these people saying, oh, 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 that's a good photo. Oh, you're so pretty. Oh, da, 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 da. And they're like, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And then the next day, change the photo of another one. <laughs> it's just, dude, I've had my Facebook since the year Facebook started. One photo on it. Well, until I started my business now, and I put on like a more professional photo, but it was always like a 20 foot away photo of me sitting at a bar like this sideways. Couldn't even tell it was me. You know, I don't give a shit. You gotta sit there and change my photo every day, but that's what they're doing. They're just so insecure. He was probably looking for you to say, wow, you're hot. I mean, just so arrogant too. It's just so gross. You reply with a photo of yourself. Is that, if that's what you mean, I don't even know what you mean, to be honest. You just said with a photo. So maybe you ask a question and they take a photo of the answer and send it to you. That's like uh, not much respect to answer your question, you know. It's like, oh, here, here, eh. <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully you're not uh, texting him anymore. Thank you. Philip from Maine. Hello, Philip. I had a friend who would be a great friends one minute, then without warning, accuse me of deadly offenses and end contact. And you went a little bit more into that. I shortened it up. Do you think she's a narcissist? Um, again, I wouldn't know. You know, I'm, first of all, I'm not a doctor. I don't diagnose people. I don't tell anyone. I've never sat there in front of somebody and said, you are this. <laughs> I don't know. This is somebody I don't know. I couldn't even give an opinion on that. But the behavior is narcissistic. Hope that helps. You know, my, my, you know, here, here's the deal, Philip. If you've been in a relationship with disordered people, then yeah, I would say they're narcissists. That's a good guess because I have yet today have had a client call me up and this was the only, they only had one dealing with a narcissist their whole life. I've had people tell me that and then we soon discover that's not true. But if you, I'm telling you, if, if you've been in love with a narcissist and you're all bent the hell out of shape after it's over, I'm telling you, man, you've done it before. You have narcissist friends and probably one of your parents is one. Probably. That's just, I have yet today to find anyone where it's just one single incident with a narcissist. And they're all bent up over it. And they dated him for four years, lived with him, loved him can miss the hell out of them. I know they're a narcissist, but I keep doubting myself. I, I know I know what they've done to me, but I still want them back. <laughs> it's like, uh, there's things you need to fix, and 
you're going to have other people like that in your life. Trust me. You just are. Okay? So, you want me to guess? I would guess that, yeah, they are a narcissist. But I, I, I can't do that. You know what I mean? I just can't. I don't diagnose anybody. I'm not a doctor. I can't do that. And I, I really, it's, it's not an easy thing to do. Is it? And you guys know that. Um, it, it can be very hard to do to your own parents to know if they are. Right? So how would I know someone I don't even know? I don't know. But behaviors, we judge by behaviors, right? Not intentions. Behavior, pretty bad. Not, uh, not excusable, right? Up and down, crazy. That, that right there sounds like bipolar. But, you know, but is this single incidences? Is she, is she always been like this her whole life? Personality disorder. Okay? Hope that helps, Philip. Hope that helps you guys. That's the last question. Thank you, everybody. Everybody, everybody, everybody. Please, any questions you have, go down and ask me, okay? And I will do this again. See you guys next Monday. If you can help me, do I've done my part. You do yours. Get it out there. Share with people, okay? Put it on in, in all kinds of social media, whatever you can do. Some groups, okay? Forums, stuff like that. People are looking for answers, so let's let them have it, okay? Let's give it to them. Okay, thank you guys very, very, very much. Love yourself first. I'll see you next Monday. Bye-bye.